<laughs> You're officially my favorite student, Austin. Okay, so what does the two, the two, I'm going to review for a second because I forgot to push a button for a few seconds. Do not say in a time signature, the top number tells you the number of beats in a measure and the bottom number tells you what kind of note gets a beat. It's not true. Um, I'm going to put a rule on here, which is you always put the number where the beats are and you always put the beats, two rules, you always put the beats where you tap your foot. So if I'm playing music like this, um, it's hard to tap my foot, but let's say I'm doing just a simple one, two, one, two, one, two. Wherever my foot is tapping, those have to be numbers. And numbers are only on beats. Every beat has a number. And the only thing you call a beat is where you put the numbers. And the only thing that is a beat is where you would tap your foot when you were listening to the music. Those are my rules for, for meters. So what the two numbers of the time signature really do tell you is they tell you how long a bar is. So if you're in 4-4, four, four, a bar is four quarter notes long. That is true. If you're in 13-16, a bar is 13 16th notes long. Write 13 16th notes, put a bar line. Write 13 more 16th notes, put a bar line. 7-8 is always 7 eighth notes long. That doesn't tell you anything about where the beats are. So if I'm playing, I'm gonna get a drum out here so I can, I might just need a pair of sticks. If I'm playing, uh, let's see. Lost my train of thought. I'm bad at that. Can anybody help me out? Okay, seven eight. I know my my bars are seven eighth notes long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But you're not gonna tap your foot seven times, right? It'd be too fast. It'd be uncomfortable, and that's not the way the music feels. When you listen to seven eight, you're gonna divide it. It's usually a three time signature. Seven eight is usually three beats. And one of those beats is long. So it's two, two, three, or two, three, two, or three, two, two. Some kind of a num set, set of numbers that add up to seven that would give you a full bar. So if usually it's the third beat that's long. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Let's make sure I'm not too loud. Okay. One, two, three. But it doesn't have to be that way. It could be the second beat. One, two, three. One, two, three. Sounds completely different, right? If I were to improvise in this, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. It it feels different than one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. But you're gonna want to tap your foot in that nice, comfortable kind of walking pace. Um, and you can only put numbers where you tap your foot, where you feel the beat. So three beats, one of them is going to be longer. Now, because of this, 7-8 doesn't tell you what the, what the groove sounds like. If you just say 7-8, you're not giving people enough information to, to know whether it's 2-2-3 two, two, or 3-2-2 two, two, or 2-3-2 two, two, or 4 plus 3 or some, there are some other ways to combine it. 6 plus 1 is possible. It would be weird and lopsided, but it would be conceivable. Um, so what you need to do, what I pair the time signature with is what I call a skeleton. Do you remember when I wrote just the eighth notes on the board the other day for seven, eight? That's the skeleton. When you give a, when you say seven, eight and you show the skeleton, what you're showing is you can see where the beats are subdivided. You can see there are three beams. The first two notes are beamed together. The second two notes are beamed together, and the last three notes are beamed together. Those beams are what tell you where the beats are, because it's three groups of stuff. That's one, two, and three. So the beams, now it's possible to put an a, a rest in there to, to break those up. But generally speaking, the beams are what show you the, the shape of the music. 
or, or the skeleton that goes along with that time signature. So everybody, everybody convinced? Do not tell your students the top number tells you the number of beats. It just doesn't. Unless you want to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five. If you want to feel your beats that fast, you're on your own. I'm not going to join you with that. Um, okay, so we're going to go, we're going to start with two, four, nice and simple. And I'm going to assume that you know nothing about rhythm and we're just going to build from the beginning up until we get to whatever comfort level you guys have with rhythm. And then we'll try to keep pushing that throughout the semester. So we're going to start with quarter notes in, in two, four. One, two. Uh, let's use a right hand on the knee or something. One, two. One, two. Now, right now, this is the beat. We're, we're playing the beat in this particular time signature, two, four. One, two. <clears throat> One, two. The beat, you really do have two beats per measure, and the quarter note does get a beat. Um, we're going to talk about more of that notation stuff later. What can you do with these? We're speeding up a little bit. Relax into the speed. Let it settle. There we go. Uh, what can you do with this beat? If you were to play, can anyone just improvise while they're playing this with their mouth? I'll give you an example. Da, 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 all kinds of things you can do with it. Can you all try that? You ready? I'll, I'll help you keep the time. Sure. Yeah. Could you notate all those? Or do you see how they're all connecting to the beat? Yeah. I, mm. Like how many subdivisions were you using in each beat? I have no clue. <laughs> okay. So th th this is the next step. I want you to start thinking about that. You can already do it. You feel the beat. You're getting rhythms that are interesting within the beat. For the most part, you were using four subdivisions. Da, 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 dee, da, 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 dee, da, da, da. Um, and sometimes you were going down to the eight level. If I did a whole beat of that fast beat, I would have eight of them. If I just continued that, those are 30 second notes. We'll talk about the notation later. So start thinking about how am I subdividing these beats? Am I putting two or three subdivisions in? This is two or four. Um, four, four was mainly what I was hearing. But four is kind of just an expansion of two. If I take one and I just put my left hand in between, the simplest thing you can do, now I've subdivided it into two. Now, if I subdiv if I can, I can shift my right hand and I can start playing this speed, now my right hand's playing eighth notes or twos. And now if I put my left hand in, I'm playing fours. And if I get my right hand to play the, these fours, then when I put my left hand, now I'm doing eight. These are the things I want you to start experimenting with. Um, for now, let's stick to twos and fours, not doing the three or fives. We could do lots of, we, I'll teach you later if you want to, how to put five subdivisions in and how to count that. But for now, let's just start with twos and fours and let's try to improvise around that. You wanna try it? Nope. Uh, how about if I play it? Can you just make some rhythms up with your hands, with your mouth, with anything? It d this is not art. This is an exercise. Boring is fine. Just, just try it out a little bit. What's that? Okay, make it simpler. Da, 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 da. Everything should fit into one of these sixteenths. Da, 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 da. D, da, da. Eighth notes. Sixteenths. That's a sixth subdivision. 
It's all right. Okay. So practice this. And you, I'm not saying you can't practice the sixes. You should be practicing them. But get control over, I'm going to do just fours, or I'm going to do just twos, and start experimenting with it and seeing what you can do with it. You ready to try? Make up any rhythm you want. Just, just play around this too. Eventually, you need to be making this happen while you're doing the improv improvisation. But for now, I'll, I'll help with the time. Try it out. That's probably going to be a six, three or a six subdivision then. But um, that it can be simple and boring. Don't try to make this interesting. This is just an exercise. Da 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 di da 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 di da da. That's perfect for this exercise. Excellent. Okay, Valerie, can you try this? <coughs> that was great. That worked. That worked just fine. You yeah, try it, Hannah. Really <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay, so let's go through. We're just gonna concentrate on these twos and fours. And we're going to go through, we're going to do a permutation. I'm going to show you all the possibilities of notes you could put into one beat with 16th notes. All of them. There are only 16 possibilities of ways that you could put notes that are on the 16th notes into a beat of 2-4. There are only 16 possible ways you could make rhythms up. One of them is a quarter note. So let's just clap along tap leg whatever but here's the time and this hand is going to be what am I gonna do here's the time on my foot and I'll play this hand with the rhythm that we're gonna talk about first is we're just gonna play the beat so we're right on the beat this is the first most simple thing we can do just play right with the beat now I'm playing one note per beat and it's right on the beat now I'm gonna put that note that one note that we're gonna play I'm going to put it on the and, right in between. Uh, good. Think about which hand is playing the time, which hand is playing this note that we're talking about. Now we're going to put, we're still playing one note per beat, and it's right on the and. Now stop. Keep the time going. Now we're going to do the E, right after the beat. One note at a beat. One note per beat. Before the beat, a one, a two, e and a one, e and a two, a one. Excellent. Okay, now we're gonna play two notes per beat. Easiest way to do that is just to play the, the eighth notes. So here's the beat again. Two two notes per beat. One and two and one and two and one, two. Excellent. Everybody seems to be comfortable with this. Okay, listen to this one. This is going to be the same sound, but instead of the one and the and, we're going to play the E and the A. Uh. So if you just listen to this hand, it sounds exactly like the eighth notes, but it's offset by one sixteenth. Okay? So that's the only that's the only way we can play two notes per beat where they are the same distance apart, they're equal. Now we're going to play two notes per beat, but we're going to separate, we're going to break them apart. So now we're going to play one E, one E, and a two E, and a one E, two E. You're playing the beat and the sixteenth note right after it. Okay, now we're going to move the double one sixteenth note later. One E and two E and one E and two E and excellent. Now we're gonna move it one note later again. Can you picture what it is? 
and a two, and a one, and a two, and a one, two, one. Can you just say the numbers with me? One, two, one, two, one, two. I only hear me. Two, one, two, one, two. Keep yourself challenged when you're working on this later. There's one more possibility like this. Movement one later. A four, uh, a one, a two, a one. Join me, please, again. A one, a two, a one, a two. Okay, let's just go to the one. Let's do the beat. Go back to the beat. Play the beat with me. Okay, now we're gonna put, we're gonna do it back to the quarter notes. Just play them together. Now, the the melody note or the, the, the rhythm note is gonna play the note before it and together. Before together, before together. I think you switched your beat hand, but yes. Ben. I, I'm just saying okay you're doing you should be playing uh one so the the beat should be the second note you're playing uh, there you go you had it on the first that's it um We have now played all the possibilities of having two notes and a beat. Two notes and a beat, that was all of them. Now we're gonna do up to 16th notes, that was all of them. Now we're gonna do three notes per beat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play, uh, first we're just gonna fill in the 16th, one E and a, two E and a, one E and a, three notes in a row. Excellent. Good, now we'll stop, keep the beat going. Now we're gonna do it right on the beat. One E and, two E and, one E and, two E and. Okay, now we're gonna do uh, one and a two, and a one, and a two, and a one. Make sure both hands are together on the number. One and a two, and a one, and a two. Okay, there's one more. One, a two E, a one E. A two E, a one E, a two E, a one E, a two E, a one E, a two E. Okay. Now the last one we need to do is four notes in a beat. It is one E and a two E and a one E and a two E. And a. Okay. Every one of you just successfully played every possible syncopation of sixteenth notes in two four. That's it. There are no more. If you only go to the level of 16th notes, that is the most complicated the music can get in 2-4 or 4-4. Four, four. Are you surprised by that? My point is, you can all do it. You just need to get a little more comfortable. If you practice this skill, this is when people say drummers have good timing. It's because drummers practiced this at the beginning of their training. Like, this is what we actually sit and do. Turn on a metronome to keep that left hand steady and then we start fitting other rhythms into it so if I'm doing this exercise the general exercise is this you play the two and then you do anything you want with the other hand and you try to make it interesting and you try to make it improvise so if I'm as a drummer I've done this for decades now so what it sounds like it's interesting it's fun I'm gonna speed up a little bit Everything I just played was the same things you just played. I just mixed them up. You can all do this. It's just you have to spend the time. It's kind of like walking and singing your solfege on chords. If you start practicing this while you're walking, you can use your feet as the one and the two and just start snapping and trying to figure out interesting ways to get those rhythms. There are only 16 possible 16th note rhythms. And then you know all of the syncopations that you can possibly have. You just have to start practicing them and get good at them. Is everybody on board for this? You, I need you to get good at this. Start, you don't need a piano, you don't need a drum, 
You don't. You just need your hands or your feet. While you're walking, you can start practicing this. Imagine if you commit to doing this when you're walking. You develop that habit. A year from now, you are going to know every possible rhythm that I could throw at you. Or you can be frustrated and realize this is difficult and not practice it. And then a year from now, you're going to be exactly where you are right now. Those are your two options. What are the biggest of your walking habits? <laughs> Well, I've been, I've been doing this for decades, and my walking is very interesting. Not to other people, but to me. Like, I, I do double snaps to practice this stuff now. I've got, like, I can do these fun things because I learned this, and then when I'm playing within an ensemble, I hear those rhythms and I connect to other people much more deeply than I did before I started doing this work. If you say that you don't have good rhythm, this system that I'm showing you right now will teach you to think like a drummer and you will have, if you're not a drummer, you'll have better rhythm than everyone else who plays your instrument if you do this for a year. Just get in the habit of challenging yourself and making yourself explore these rhythms. You don't have to, you don't have to use permutations, just use heuristics. Try to find things that are interesting. Find things you can't do challenge yourself and and learn to do them every single time you do that it's one more thing in your arsenal and your arsenal keeps getting bigger and bigger until you can just play whatever rhythm people need you to play as a side benefit you will also develop strategies for solving problems that you can't play you'll have these this core skill set and this core set of techniques for solving problems that you don't have right now and it'll help you solve your own problems in the future but it takes work. It takes, it takes an investment of time, um, which I suggest you should take from that time you're already wasting. When you're walking around and you're not thinking about anything or you're, you're angry about something that you shouldn't be angry about and you need to think about something positive or healthy, get your mind on this stuff and, and start figuring this stuff out. And if you find something you can't do, that would be a great thing to bring into the class and let us all talk about it. I'll help you solve any problems you run into. And then we'll all learn something new that we can all incorporate into our own exercises. Are you all sold on this? Solfege while you're walking and rhythm while you're walking. You don't have to take extra practice time to do it. You don't have to borrow time from your scales. Find time that you're now wasting and make use of it. It doesn't take a lot of time each day. If you do this 15 minutes a day, a month from now, you're going to be noticeably stronger in your rhythm. And some, same thing with your solfege. Uh, but you got to put the investment in. Uh, you got to find time to do it now. All right, let's see what else I have here. Some of this I'm going to save. about 20 minutes left. Let's go in and play marimba. I'm going to have you all play the polka exercise. Or maybe we'll just improvise. We'll, we'll, we'll decide when we get in there. 